Tech Insights, the authoritative semiconductor and microelectronics intelligence platform. The annual Big Apple event was last week, last Tuesday, and uh, as always, some new technologies and new products were introduced. Um, I mean, there's a lot of hype and it's, it is worth talking a little bit about some of the technical innovation that we are seeing in uh, specifically in the new iPhone, iPhone 13. Um, there's a lot of buzz around uh, camera technology. Um, and although it's, it's too early to say yet whether we're actually going to see some new sensors here that we haven't seen before. Well, certainly that'll be one of the first things on our list when we start taking apart the uh, the newest iPhones when I think they're scheduled to arrive this Friday. Um, certainly just from a photography standpoint, a little bit of interest here. Their macro view, in at least in my opinion, is nothing short of spectacular. You can see the image of the leaf there in the top right-hand corner, and uh, that's certainly not something I've ever seen before in a, from, a, from a phone. Um, but diving into some more technical details in the bottom left-hand corner, you can see uh, the latest uh, processor going into the iPhones. Now, this was largely expected. Um, there was some early rumors that we would see one of Apple's new M-class chips showing up in the iPhone um, that was uh, not, didn't happen, uh, didn't really expect it to happen. It is an extension of the A-class chips. Uh, the so-called A15. And um, so what's new here? I mean, it's the same process technology that we've seen before. Uh, what uh, we do see is an increase in GPU power. This is graphics processing power with five cores in the highest end. What, what interesting, Stacy actually caught this and let me know uh, that she saw. Um, there are actually two flavors of the A15 processor, one with five GPU cores, one with four. Um, so what does the five core mean? It just means that there's going to be higher performance for things like gaming. And it could be that some of the video production uh, capabilities take advantage of the um, parallel GPU cores to um, speed things along when you're when you're doing your video processing. What's interesting, if you um, follow what's going on in machine learning circles, GPU processor cores or units are actually really, really good at doing things like machine learning. Um, and so what we may end up seeing in, uh, in Apple ecosystem is these GPU cores being leveraged more and more for machine learning. However, as we switch to the M class cores, we might actually see some dedicated, um, dedicated processing specifically for machine learning. We're not there yet with Apple. What else are we seeing? Uh, very top center a massive one terabyte of memory in the biggest iPhone. Now, to be honest, I can't actually really understand what on earth you would need one terabyte of data for, maybe video production. Um, however, it is extreme high density. I'm looking forward to seeing who they are using. Um, but we're also seeing, or I guess maybe hearing, that um, because of the semiconductor shortage, the highest uh, capacity, memory capacity iPhones are actually being delayed and delayed again. So shipping dates from everything that I am reading in the one terabyte range are now being pushed well into October um, because of part availability. So uh, it even impacts Apple with all of their buying power. The other thing that I want to mention is the, the the next, I guess, flavor of bands in the 5G space. So again, 5G is the next generation after 4G. This is the cellular data communication that all of our phones use. Um, 5G has two flavors and, and the newer and perhaps most more important band are the so-called millimeter wave. These are very, very short radio waves, doesn't really matter. Um, but has the potential to be really, really fast from a data perspective. Um, the unfortunate part for those of us in Canada is that this is not yet rolled out in Canada. In fact, um, you, you will only see uh, 5G phones. In fact, the hardware is different in the US. Uh, and they have now picked up a third millimeter wave band. Uh, and you can see the list of bands if you actually want to look them up. Um, what's, what's tough about millimeter wave tech is that it's actually fairly short range. So you actually need repeaters, towers, or maybe just smaller installations on top of buildings to make this work. And here in Canada, at least, the infrastructure is not yet there. In fact, Canada even hasn't gone as far as auctioning off 
the uh, these frequency bands yet. So we are years away from seeing it here. Uh, those of you in the U.S. in specific cities can now take advantage with your new iPhones with really ultra fast 5G. And this is really the potential game changer of being able to do far less processing on your phone. In fact, really just levering, leveraging the power of the high speed data and um, uh, doing a lot of the, the heavy lifting downstream in uh, on, on the server side. I think I saw a question come up and let me just have a quick look here. The GPU cores used for video are used more as um, uh, GP GPU. That's a really hard question to answer, and I don't know. The Apple ecosystem is really tightly controlled and really closed. I've been having conversations with some uh, job candidates, actually, who are working in the GPU space about understanding when GPU cores are actually active and when they're not. So. A super important question. I wish I had an answer for you, but I don't. This is something that we're going to be looking at more and more as we look at sort of functional test and performance of processors uh, to go over and above the, the structural analysis that we do. So those are the highlights. Uh, this wasn't revolutionary. It was just evolutionary, but uh, good for all of us to be in the know.